Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA hopping on live to work with you on a fun little mid-century modern cabinet. So welcome, nice to see you. Thank you for joining me today. It is Wednesday, it is 3 p.m. and this is my scheduled time to come hang out with you on the Dixie Bell paint page. So if you know me, I like to sit on the floor, I like to play with paint, and I like to do some bold color. So I have a little surprise for you today. You can see a tiny little sneak peek behind me, but I've got some really fun stuff going on with this buffet, and I thought I can show you a lot of things. So we're gonna have an hour of class, and we're gonna learn about Slick Stick, and we're gonna learn about why we use it. We're gonna paint with some tree frog green, and I'm also going to show you how to achieve a kind of dark aged effect, um, number one with wax, and number two, we can also play with our Dixie Dirt today. So you ready? You guys ready to hop right in and get going? I see Dixie Bells on here, and we will get started. So welcome, lovely to see everybody. All right, so here we go. I'm sitting on the floor, and I've got this gorgeous buffet behind me. And yes, there's three parts to this little buffet behind me. So why is there three parts to this? Why is it not painted? Why is it slick sticked and why is it painted? Well, this is so that I can show you to the best of my ability how to achieve um, a look in this short period of time that we have together. So I'm gonna do a lot of talking. I might not read all of the comments, but I will come back in after I'm finished. I will read them all and Dixie Bell is on here to help me answer everything. So let's go, ready? This mid-century modern buffet is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, MCM means mid-century modern. It's a style of furniture that was very popular, um, like 40s and 50s, and it's very, you know, outer space looking. It always has really cool, clean lines, and it's a little bit ahead of its time, because now in this time period, it's considered a very valuable piece of furniture. What this little puppy isn't showing you right now is that, yes, it's MCM, yes, it's got super clean lines and it's gorgeous, but this is plastic. <laughs> <laughs> so this door, these doors, these molded shaped um, beautiful doors are not really wood. So when I get a piece, and I just happen to have purchased this piece at a local Goodwill store, um, I take them home with their good deals, whether or not they're plastic or real wood. So how do you paint a plastic piece of furniture? Because this is shiny. This is not sandable. If you take a piece of sandpaper, all that's going to happen is you're going to scuff it up and make a powdery mess. It's not an ideal surface to put your paint on. So I will give you all of the products, don't you worry. I see you asking those questions on there. I cover it all. I cover it from step one to done. We're gonna get it all done today. So how do you paint a plasticized surface that's not real wood? How do you paint metal? How do you paint glass? Well, Dixie Bell makes a product um, called Slick Stick, and Slick Stick is my new best friend. Slick Stick helps you paint on a surface that is not wood. It helps you paint onto a surface that you might not have been able to paint before. Because if I were to just pick this up, clean it with white lightning, and put my paint on here, I know because of the shiny, can you hear that? A shiny plastic surface that my paint is not going to adhere well. So I want to make sure today that this little puppy is ready to go and it's going to be all of the things and it's going to be fabulous. And I'm going to teach you how you can paint anything with Dixie Bell paint products. So today we are going to use a product called Slick Stick. What is Slick Stick? Slick Stick number one is amazing. It's the bomb. It is something that every painter should have in their toolbox, okay? This is a product that helps me do a professional job. It helps me have a good, you know, a good thought that my paint is going to stick and it's going to stick well, and I am going to be happy with the outcome. So Slick Stick only comes in one color. Slick Stick only comes in white, okay? What I like to do with my Slick Stick is, because when this goes on, here's the deal. I did this yesterday, y'all. I'm going to scratch this. I can't get it off. If I can't get it off, that tells me my paint has an amazing surface to grip onto. So Slick Stick is a bonding agent for slick and shiny surfaces. You can paint things that you normally wouldn't paint, like plastic or metal or glass. This is your tool to get a professional look and get it done the right way, okay? So proper prep 101 needs Slick Stick. You need this, y'all, all right? And I'm gonna show you how to use it. So. Number one, I use a throwaway chip brush. 
Well, why do I use the throwaway chip brush? Well, because I'm obsessed and in love with my beautiful medium flat brushes, but if I put slick stick on there, chances are it's not gonna wash out well enough for me to keep these brushes working fabulous because I love these brushes. You can see how well loved they are. They are <laughs> painted in every color of the rainbow and I use them over and over and over again. So in order to keep my fancy brushes fancy, I'm gonna use a chip brush, okay? You can also purchase chip brushes, slick stick, or any of the products used today in the link above my head, or you can find your local retailer and do your own Dixie Bell shopping, all right? So, slick stick and a chip brush. How do you use slick stick? Well, I've cleaned this piece entirely with white lightning. Once it is clean, and I know it's ready for, for proper painting because you wanna remove any of the oils, any of the old junk, this is an old piece, it's been around the block. You wanna make sure it's clean. So it has been cleaned with white lightning. After I clean it with white lightning, I'm going to use my slick stick. When you use your slick stick, you can apply it in any fashion you like, okay? You can be super neat, you can be super tidy, but I just like to make sure that I'm gonna cover this entire surface. You're going to want to use slick stick with two coats of coverage, okay? And you need to wait two to four hours in between each coat to make sure that is dry. All right, so yesterday I started over here. I painted one coat on, I waited three hours, I came back in and I made sure then I could apply my second coat with my chip brush, okay? I keep a bunch of these little handy chip brushes around um, because after I'm done with this one use, I can just throw it in the garbage and it's gone. So after you've applied your second coat of slick stick, I'm sure you wanna get painting because I know I do. I'm an impatient painter, I wanna paint but you need to wait 24 hours in between the time that you've applied your last coat of slick stick to the time that you're going to be painting your surface, okay? By waiting 24 hours, you're ensuring that your product is completely dry, it's gonna do its job well, and you're gonna be able to paint over top of it easily. So now you can see how easy it goes on. Slick stick is just like a white bonding agent primer, all right? I always make sure to not have any big drips, pick out any loose little tiny you know, dog hairs or brush hairs, anything that gets on there. But you're gonna to wanna to cover your entire surface that you're painting with slick stick. Once this goes on and it's completely dry, you're left with this, and then you're able to start painting. Now, I'm not kidding when I say I can't get this off. Like, I'm scratching this as hard as I can with my fingernail. That tells you that this product works and it works well. So, once again, let me go over the process. Slick stick for shiny surfaces that are plasticized, metal, or even shiny wood. I like to use slick stick on those Bombay style tables. All right, when you're using slick stick, I like to use a throwaway brush. This enables me to just chuck it in the bin when I'm done. Um, and then I do not have to worry about ruining my delicious medium flat brushes because they are like gold to me and I need to keep them nice and clean um, and working, good working order. So, slick stick is going to be requiring two full coats. Two full coats of slick stick, waiting two to four hours in between coats. Then, after your final coat of slick stick is onto your project, what you're going to need to do is then wait 24 hours for it to dry 100% before you come in with your paint and start painting. Do you have it? Do you got it? Is it clear as mud? Do you get what I'm saying? How's that little tutorial for you? That's my little Slick Stick 101 tutorial. You can clean the brush if you wanted to um, with uh, either your scrubby soap or warm water and dish soap. But here's the deal. These are super cheapies. Throw them away, save your hassle, keep your nice brushes for your nice paint. That's what I like to do anyways. It really helps um, kind of I buy these on purpose just for the throwaway purpose of doing slick stick. Here's the other thing you get. When you purchase Dixie Bell paint products, you're gonna get a little how-to book, okay? This is like a tiny little pamphlet that's gonna to explain to you each of the projects. So this is gonna tell you about slick stick. It's gonna tell you that it's a gripper for slippery surfaces that allows you to paint all the shiny things like this plastic, plastic wood, not real. <laughs> It's totally molded plastic doors, which is also why I don't feel bad about painting this mid-century modern piece. Um, I know it's a little, some people freak out about mid-century modern being painted, but here's the deal. It's plastic, it's not real wood, so I am going to paint it, and we're gonna paint it fabulous today, all right? So, the other thing you should do when you have slick stick, and I need to do it right now because I'll forget, and then I'm gonna be stuck. When they say slick stick sticks to everything, <laughs> 
wipe off your lids before you put them back on. Otherwise, you're gonna be hammering them like me to try and get it open again um, and make sure that this little rim stays clear because otherwise you have to work really hard to get the lids off. And I'm a messy girl, so I need a reminder to do that. All right, I have not used slick stick on marble, no, but I've used slick stick on glass. I do a lot of really cute little jewelry boxes um, and I will cover the glass entirely with slick stick knowing that then when I paint, it's not gonna come off. I have seen other girls do it, and if you are watching and you have done that, you can chime in and let her know if you've done this on marble or stone. Um, but you can do it really on any surface. Like, it's not coming off. Can you hear that? Like, I'm scratching as hard as I can. So, Slick Stick Tutorial 101 is finished. How was that? Everybody learned something? I hope so. We're gonna move along down the buffet, okay? So, next on this cutie little buffet. I'm gonna bring the camera down for the ride. We're gonna go this way. All right, here we go. So, this panel has been dry now for 24 hours. Because you're waiting 24 hours for your slick stick to dry after the second coat. All right, you cannot rush this process. You need to wait. This panel and the rest of the piece has been painted. I only left one door unpainted so that I could show you how it works, all right? so. We are gonna hop in here today and we're gonna do some crazy bold color because hello, it wouldn't be me if I wasn't painting something ridiculous and fabulously colorful. So I have you nice and close so that everybody can see what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna paint with tree frog green today. How fabulous is that color? So fabulous, right? Super fabulous. Um, I think people are scared of this color and you should not be because it is super delicious and it makes all the pieces look like a million bucks. I've only used it a couple times and I am now a convert. I am a big fan of tree frog green. <laughs> so it's now one of my favorite colors. Look at that green, so good. Um, this mid-century modern piece, when I think of pieces in this style, I think of bright, bold colors. I think of, you know, a statement piece. I wanna make this piece look really, really good. I happen to have four vintage legs actually from a mid-century piece that had fallen apart um, and I am thinking that when this is painted tree frog green I will probably get in here and reinstall the gold handles and I might even paint these bright gold and add them to the piece let me know your thoughts they're pretty cool I could even stain this part because it's wood and paint that part bright gold and it would be fabulous I have the hardware down here but I think I just locked it into the other side. So let me see if I can get it up and show you really quickly. So this has like kind of bizarre hardware. It's very tiny, like microscopic. And I've already painted it gold and they go on either side because this panel is faux. This panel in the middle does not open. Um, so I think gold and green is a seriously classic, delicious combination. And everybody should buy this color at least once. Paint it and get it out of your system because it's one of my faves. One of my faves. So let's move along. Let's paint some tree frog green, shall we? And then we're gonna move on to the dry panel. I'm gonna teach you all about waxes. So today I have my medium flat brush, my well-loved medium flat brush. Why do I like this brush? Well, I like it because it's light in my hand. It's easy to hold and I paint a lot. So this doesn't hurt me when I'm painting a lot, all right? So it's already wet. It's already been dampened because I washed it today. And we're gonna jump in with tree frog green. I need to tell you that with tree frog green, along with some of the other colors that are very, very bright and bold, they are gonna take multiple coats of paint. You're not gonna get away with a one coat wonder like I love, like my in the navy or my purple. This is gonna take a little bit more love. It's gonna take two coats, if not two and a tiny bit more to get the full coverage that we need. So tree frog green, this is the simple part, all right? I'm gonna take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing because I can see you but I can't see what I'm doing up close. We're just going to paint this on. The other cool thing about slick stick is that because it's white it's giving me a really good base for this fabulous green. Um, it's letting me have a kind of a lighter base. I know it seems backwards to paint white underneath a bright but if you're painting pinks or reds having this nice light kind of white background actually means that you're going to use less paint. If I would have left it the original wood surface, I would have been using two times as much paint um, because it's gonna be harder to cover. So we're just gonna paint our paint on here. How we doing? Everybody hanging in? Am I missing any fabulous questions? 
Let's see. I'm fun. Well, thank you, Teresa. You're, that's really nice to say. You know what? I kind of live for my Wednesdays now. I love to come on here and hang out with you guys. I wish I could do it more often. If you'd like, you can come over and follow my Facebook page. I linked it above my head. Um, I paint live over there sporadically. I'm not good on a schedule. I just kind of jump in by the seat of my pants. Um, but, but I do share a lot over there. And you can come follow me. Or you can also find all of my videos on YouTube. Everything from my social media is listed at the top drawer RVA. And you're going to find me. Even on TikTok. Even on TikTok. It's a lot of fun. So this is kind of the boring part. I'm usually doing ombre or Mad Hatter or crazy finishes. But this piece screams some amazing color. So slick stick is no prep. I'm, I'm not sure what your question is other than cleaning your piece well before you apply slick stick. That's all you have to do. There's no prep. You don't have to sand anything. That's not a needed thing to do. You're just cleaning well with white lightning, making sure that your piece doesn't have any of those weird residual oils, you know, pieces that are really old. Sometimes people use like pledge and all sorts of crazy things to clean and it leaves very strange oil. So you wanna just make sure all of that is gone by cleaning with white lightning. Um, once you do that, you're good to go. You can throw your slick stick right on top and you're ready to paint. So what do we think about this color? Is it fabulous? It's super good, right? Super fabulous. I really like it. This in um, Colonel Mustard is kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to paint one coat, or like one color of something. I mean, it's going to be bright and it's going to be crazy bold and it's going to be green. <laughs> <laughs> green or yellow I feel like this even though it's bright will still fit in to a lot of people's decor being a statement piece but it is very low this is actually the base of um, a hutch I think at one point it would have had a very tall hutch on the top with glass but by the time it got to me from the Goodwill here locally it didn't have that anymore so because it's low I thought about adding hairpin legs but the hairpin legs that I bought were really, really too tall. They were 16 inches. So I used those on another piece. I used those on that beautiful suitcase that I painted a couple weeks ago. So I thought, because I save all of the things and all of the garbage, that these legs might be really, really cool. Plus they're sturdy as heck. I mean, they don't make stuff like this anymore. You can't destruct it. The whole entire dresser fell apart that I bought but I pretty much bought it for salvage pieces, which was the hardware and these cool little feet. So I don't know, do you think I should stain that part and then paint this gold? Cause that could be pretty fab. I'm kind of digging this, this wood color with the green. Um, you know, another option for this piece on the top, even though it's faux wood, even though it's plastic, you can use gel stain. I could have done gel stain on the top on here because gel stain can even go over top of fake wood with not a problem. It's a great product to cover up that shiny laminate surface. I do that often as well on pieces that are not real wood. And then you get a really beautiful stained look. But I knew I wanted this entire piece green and I'm probably going to be wearing it. It'll be in my face in like five minutes. <laughs> always, always. And I might even open up these cool fun doors and do some great stenciling on the inside for a, you know, splash of color, something fun something amazing. So like I said, this beautiful tree frog green is going to take a couple coats. This is not something that's going to happen quickly. You need to build it. You can see how thick and matte and beautiful this, this side is over here versus this one coat that I'm putting on, which is quite streaky, but it doesn't matter because it looks streakier than it really is because it's over top of the white, over top of this, uh, the slick stick. That's going to do its job and help my paint stick. So I know that I'm going to be painting this a couple times all the way around. But so far, so good, right? Looking delicious, looking super good. Let's see. Stain in gold. I think stain in gold might be, might be the deal because the next thing will be flipping this puppy over and getting out my power tools and using my, my giant girl power arms to like drill it down. That might be a daddy job. I might have to wait for my husband to come home and help me. Um, but we will see, we will see. So you can find slick stick in the link that's listed above my head, Stephanie, or you can click there to find your local retailer. This comes in a couple different sizes. 
um, and you can purchase whatever size suits your needs. You don't use a lot of it because you're not painting like a beautiful precise line. You're just covering all of that surface that you want to cover um, to ensure that your paint's gonna stick. But it only comes in white, so be prepared that it does only come in white. And then you have to paint over top of that, that white paint, that white slick stick. But like I said, it's, it's a good way to kind of have your paint build up those layers because it was gonna take twice as long to cover this this wood color see this wood surface on the inside this plastic wood door if i went straight onto this uh, it would take a little bit longer to cover the dark wood versus you know something that has had the light on the front now that i have this open let's do this edge so how are we doing let's see missing anything i'm getting paint everywhere that's normal i got my painting pants on so i can just wipe it on my leg that's what we do around here. <laughs> we just wipe the paint <laughs> on me. It's usually on the bottom of my feet. It's usually on, you know, my manicure is not a manicure. It's just paint. It is what it is. The life of an artist, right? Messy and dirty. So, any questions about painting with tree frog green other than knowing it's gonna take you a couple coats like waiting for this to dry and coming back in is a necessity to get the coverage that you need to get that beautiful emerald tree frog green. If you like in between coats, you can sand lightly if you feel like you have strokes or anything. But on the second coat is when I come in and use my spray misting bottle. I don't really need it on the first coat. The second coat is going to help me um, minimize those brush strokes and really bring it down. But this piece is actually, what you're not seeing is, is the texture. There is a texture on this, this faux wood, these plasticide doors. They have almost like a fake wood grain, so they're not completely smooth either. All right, does Boss work like Slick Stick? No, Boss is not for Slick Stick. Let me tell you about what Boss does. So what she's asking is, what is Boss? Boss is a primer that comes in clear and it comes in white. What Boss is gonna enable you to do is it's going to block stains and odors. This is for if you have a piece that is old and stinky, that is old and and red wood that you think those tannins are going to bleed through when you put your clear coat on. This is your problem solver for old wood. And you can get the same effect with with the white if you're trying to paint a lighter color. This is going to be a good base if you did this in white, but it comes in white and it comes in clear and it's going to help you with your your priming. Both of these items, Slick Stick and Boss, are your primers for paint, okay? These are two things that you should have in your toolbox at all times to assess your piece, decide what it is that you need. Is your wood fake? Is your wood shiny? Is it not really wood? Is it laminate? But then you're probably going to need Slick Stick. Is your wood actual wood? Is it old and you know kind of stinky? And is it very red? Do you feel like your, your tannins in the wood, tannins are the, the colors that kind of come out of the wood, they leach out of the wood when you reactivate them with your sealer. Um, it's almost like you learn to, to see what things are gonna be bleeders, what I call bleeders, and that's where you're gonna get those red stains or those pink stains. So both of these items do different things. They both are prep, proper prep, but they do different things. Slick stick for shiny surfaces, boss is your problem solver for odors and tannins and bleed throughs. All right. What if it's slick and stinky? <laughs> that's, that's not good. It's, it's slick and stinky. Um, if I have an item that is real wood, most likely it's probably not going to need slick stick because slick stick is for fake, fake wood, for shiny things, for plastic, for, for that bonding agent. If I have a stinky piece, and it's shiny and it's stinky, I'm probably going to sand it down to give it you know, enough of that shine off and I will boss the entire thing, which is gonna give me a nice, even smooth surface for my paint. It's gonna remove any of that stinky smell and it's going to then um, stop any bleed through that you might have. So any vintage wood pieces that have dovetails in the drawers, boss them. I mean, learning from experience, I think bossing is definitely something that you're going to have to do to um, to make sure that you're not going to have those problems because what's going to happen is you're going to paint and you're going to paint a beautiful piece 
and you're gonna keep painting you're gonna be like oh this is fabulous I love my painting it looks fabulous and then when you go to seal it that's when those tannins a lot of the times come through because they're reactivated with water so I would come in here and put a clear coat on and if I didn't use my boss and it was real wood and it was old most likely those are gonna come through in a light like a light color that is anything lighter than a gray make sense clear as mud <laughs> I hope so that's a lot of information I'm sorry that but you know it's kind of one of those things I was on Instagram yesterday talking to everybody about the difference actually between boss and slick sticks so if you wanted to you can follow me on my Instagram page I did save a short video yesterday to my IGTV talking all about what is the difference slick stick versus boss and you can find all that information there all right what would I clean a piece that's not real wood and use I would use my white lightning I use my white lightning on everything and it's usually on the floor over here it's not it's somewhere else um, I disperse my white lightning into a um, an old spray bottle and then I keep that handy and I can clean all of my items with white lightning it's also a little bit of a deglosser so it's gonna take away some of that shine for you and it's gonna help all right I hope that helps I see my Dixie Belle helpers on there helping too <laughs> they have the answers for everything these smart cookies smart smart cookies all right so let's pretend that this entire piece has been painted in more than one coat of tree frog green I know it's gonna take two for the front of this door that I've already painted and that's dry this is actually two and a half coats of tree frog green in order to get this really pretty um, matte finish that covers the slick stick that covers the fake wood and then we're gonna do some aging so let me put my brush down and move along I'm gonna bring the camera with me and we're gonna talk about how to take this kind of flat green to another level all right and I'm gonna show you two ways and I haven't decided yet which way I'm gonna do it so it could go either way this is actually all training for you today and I can come back in and alter my piece afterwards and we can finish off with darkening it okay let's move along let's pretend that the entire piece has been painted in slick stick after it's been painted in slick stick you've done multiple coats of your gorgeous tree frog green and you're ready to have a dry piece but you know what when I look at this I go hmm this is lovely I mean I like it I don't know where I put the hardware again I lost it it's in the other cabinet <laughs> I like this cabinet it looks pretty there's a pretty little gold hard around here we'll pretend that my legs are on there and they're fabulous but I want to make it have a little bit more depth so what does that mean how do we age a piece that has been painted well you have a couple options when it comes to this okay so you could um, seal your piece with a satin clear coat or you could seal a piece with your wax it's entirely up to you when you're using Dixie Belle paint products you are more than welcome to use your wax over top or under the clear coats it doesn't matter you can switch them up all right so hey mr. Mike I see you watching how are you that's okay you can catch up you can go back and watch the whole thing so I look at this panel and I think wow this panel looks gorgeous it's dry it's matte I want to make it look a bit darker like to me this is pretty but I want to put a little bit more depth into all of these little crevices so you could use a Dixie Belle glaze in black if you like and when you apply a glaze you can put it on and wipe it back I do like that look but that is a little bit harder to do around the crevices when it comes to wiping it back and getting the look that I wanted so today we're gonna play with Dixie dirt and black wax both of these are gonna give you a similar effect um, but I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to use so let's close my paint before I sit in it I'll make sure that we're safe over here in the corner sitting on the floor it's the other reason I sit on the floor it's safer down here the paint can't fall as far <laughs> if it's already on the floor it can just make a bigger mess all right so I have a couple things here let's do a little bit of the Dixie dirt first and we will work on shading up on this top area and then we'll work on the wax on the base this way you can learn a little bit about both so that you can decide um, which is best for you okay all right let's begin so this panel is dry it's had two and a half coats of tree frog green you could seal this first with clear coat and then do your wax over top in your in your darkening areas or you could do it the other way around it doesn't matter 
At this point, this buffet is far from finished, so I didn't bother clear coating this door. I'm going to wait um, until I clear coat the entire piece and then I'll move along. So let's play with some Dixie Dirt. What do you say? All right, so this is Dixie Dirt. Well, what's a Dixie Dirt? Well, looks like dirt. <laughs> looks like dirt. It is a powdered pigment, okay? There you go, you can see that beautiful powder pigment. Dixie Dirt comes in a couple different colors, like a gray, a brown, and a black, okay? This is called charcoal. Charcoal is, is pretty dark, and I thought this would be a great color to accent those beautiful panels, and I'm gonna show you how I do it, okay? When I use my Dixie Dirt, I like to use my bell brush, and I like to use my Easy Peasy Spray Wax, all right? And this is a very simple way to add some age to your piece. You're gonna shake your Easy Peasy Spray Wax. You're gonna have handy paper towel and baby wipes because you're going to spray your wax on, add your pigment, and wipe it back to the effect that you like to do. Ready? Let's do it. So I take a paper towel and I take my Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Let's play with this panel. Do you wanna come in nice and close so everybody can see exactly what I'm doing and come along for a ride? bring this in. I'm always worried you're going to tip over when I do this. There we go. Nice and close. All right. Easy peasy spray wax. This is the new fancy bottle. It used to be in a black bottle. Now it's clear. You're going to shake it. You're going to spray the area where you're going to be doing your waxing. Is that too much? Not really because you're going to touch it a little bit. This is the way that I do it. Y'all, you can do it your own way, but this is the way that I do it and I can teach you. So I've sprayed this area and I'm providing a gripper now for my Dixie Dirt. I'm gonna take my little bell brush, I'm gonna to touch it in the dirt. See that? Once I touch it in the dirt, I always like to just kind of tap it off on the lid because this pigment is pretty dark. It's dark. So then I'm gonna take it, I'm just gonna rub it in to the crevice. By rubbing it and moving it around in this crevice, I'm giving the panel a little bit of an aged look. You're able to control how much dirt you're putting in, okay? So now you can see that I've added this beautiful Dixie Dirt, all right? The color that I'm using today is called charcoal. It looks almost black. When I see this though, you know what I don't like? I feel like it's a little bit too much. I wanna have a little bit less. So this is where those wet naps come in, all right? You're gonna take your wet nap and you're able to just kind of wipe it back a little bit. You can control the amount of pigment you're putting in there because I don't want it everywhere. I just kind of want it in the cracks. I want to add a little bit of age to the piece, but I don't want it to be super duper dark. So this to me is the look that I'm going for. See this really pretty little fade coming in? Can you see that? I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer just so you can get that faded look. It went from plain no Dixie Dirt over here to the shaded in area. And you can do this on any area, okay? It doesn't have to be inside of a crevice like that. You can take your Easy Peasy Spray Wax, spray it over there. I do like to blot it black back a little bit because I just find that it is, you know, you're just providing enough of a grip to add this darkness in. I dipped into the Dixie Dirt and I just darkened up this edge a little bit. So now you're able to see a little bit more. I'm going to turn it for you so it's in the light. A little more of the depth. Can you see that there? So this side has it, this side doesn't. This side has it a lot more, this side doesn't have any at all. This is just giving you a really pretty detail to your piece. It's just darkening up my edges because remember I'm going to come in here and put this gorgeous gold hardware back on and I wanna see these panels. So this is flat and pretty, but this is a little bit better for me. So let's continue on and just finish this area. Spraying my Dixie Bell spray wax, dipping my brush into my Dixie Dirt, tapping it off on the lid because it is a lot of excess on there and you don't wanna to have too much. And then you're able to just brush it on so this looks great with all Dixie Belle colors. I have yet to find a color that this doesn't work on. It looks good with every color that I've paired it with so far. 
the other thing that I like about using these baby wipes is that this is kind of wiping it into this raised panel, these crevices that I talked about. The fact that it's got this kind of fake wood grain on the piece, it's just giving it that little bit more depth to the piece. It's really sitting in the grooves and giving it a nice effect. I actually really like it. I think I might put a little bit more. Let's brush a little bit more and see what happens. Because these bell brushes hold so much of that pigment, it's still on the brush from the last time I dipped it in. Yeah, I like that. So once this dries, you can come in if you wanted and, and seal this with a clear coat. But right now, this would be fine because you've sealed it with Easy Peasy Spray Wax when you're adding this dark definition. But that baby wipe really helps kind of get it where it should live and where I like it to look. Like it's a real dirt. What do we think? Do we like this? Let's see. Could a clear wax be used if you don't have the spray? It will be, it could work the same. All you're doing when you're spraying this is giving something for this dirt to grip onto, okay? So you're gripping this, this pigment, this Dixie dirt onto your piece. The reason I like Dixie Dirt is because you're really able to control that fade. You're really able to control that thickness and that amount, and it's very easy to wipe off when you're using your little wipes, your little baby wipes. So it looks like I've got some down here where I'm gonna practice with my black wax. So I'll do my black wax on this panel, and then you can decide which one looks better. And this is the other reason I start at the top, is because it is a pigment, it is a powder. It is gonna fall down a little bit, so it's not super clean, but you're getting a really, really pretty effect. Want to come in a little bit closer just so you can see one more time before we work on the wax. See that panel? None, no shading, none at all. This is that beautiful shading sitting in the little striations that are on the wood, giving me depth to a piece that needs just a little bit more pop. I really felt like it just needed that little bit more pop. So. That is your Dixie Dirt lesson. What do you think about Dixie Dirt? Have you tried it before? It's kind of like my jam. I've, I've made sure to order one of each color um, because I just love it. I love that fade, you know, that beautiful faded, dirty look. I find that I can't get it with other products. I can really do it well with Dixie Dirt and you should sit on the floor and play with it a little bit. Feel how it works for you. But I use my easy, whoa, I almost dropped it, easy peasy spray wax, okay? And then I like my bell brush because I just like how it grabs the dirt and you can rub it on there. It sits in that brush, you can add that detail. I mean, tree frog green is beautiful, but I think it looks even better when you add a little bit of depth, okay? So that's one way that you could use to aid your piece. I use my Dixie Dirt and charcoal, and that's all I did to that one little tiny panel. And it wouldn't take long once you get started and just kind of plug away at it. Um, you would learn how to do it and how to apply it, and you don't use a lot of it. These little guys, I think the last, <laughs> the last thing I had, I've had for like a whole year, and it's still kicking. I still have more left. All right, how are we doing? You hanging in? Everybody good? Let's show you the difference between dirt and wax. Want to play with some black wax? Want to hang out and do that? All right. Next product I'm going to show you is Best Stain Wax in Black. Best Stain Wax in Black can go on to a raw surface like this that's just been painted. You can seal this with regular wax, then use your black wax. You could also clear coat this and then use your black wax. Like I said, this whole buffet needs to be painted entirely exactly the same. And so far I've broken that up into three steps, so I need to wait and repaint the entire thing. This is just to show you the steps that we can do to take this tree frog green and make it pop. All right, how do I apply my best day in wax and black? I'm not that fancy, y'all. I have an old makeup brush. <laughs> Why do I like this makeup brush? I don't know, I like it because it's soft. Um, it's a synthetic brush. And this just helps me really get into all the little cracks and crevices. Again, I will be using my baby wipes because I like to kind of wipe it back after I get it where it's gonna go. But this is Best Dang Wax in Black. And wax itself is pretty creamy. See that, see that consistency? It's kind of creamy, kind of sticky. 
which is why a lot of people like to seal their pieces before they use this wax so that they can pull back the black wax and get the exact effect that they need. So we're going to uh, show you how I do this. So I'm just gonna dip this into my black wax with my tiny little used makeup brush, nothing fancy, and I'm gonna get it on there, okay? Now we're gonna take it and I'm gonna try and do the same thing and you're gonna see the difference in using a black wax and or Dixie Dirt. So I'm gonna rub it into all of the corners. Okay, already you can see that it's maybe a little bit darker than my Dixie Dirt, but you can take a baby wipe and you can pull it back a little bit. Because these waxes are water-based, they're easy to move around and get the effect that you like. So I'm gonna just come up back in here. I'm gonna dip back into my wax again. My black wax, best dang wax in black. Let's drag some down over here like I did on the other side. So if you ask me, what's easier, wax or dirt? Personally, I like dirt. Um, I like just the fact that I can use the dirt and kind of really like brush it around, get it where I want it to go. I feel like the wax, I try and be a little bit more careful in order to get it where I want it to be. But because it's water soluble, it's a water-based product, you can pull it back and get it to where you wanna go. All right, you guys wanna come in closer and see? This way you can see the difference between these two sections on what I did, all right? Let's see, push this out of the way, bring you in nice and close. So now you can see a little bit closer up. Dixie Dirt, okay, this is my Dixie Dirt in charcoal, and this is my Best Dang Wax in black. Applied to the same areas, they look almost the same. They really do. They really don't look that much different to me. I think it's a matter of finding the preference that you like, what works for you, and how you're gonna use it. You know, do you like wiping back a lot? Do you like just pulling it down with your bell brush? It's up to you, it's up to you. But this is what we're gonna do to the whole piece, so let's keep playing. Any questions? Well, I can see you nice and close. Any questions about black wax? You could apply this with the rag if you wanted to. You can apply this with a smaller brush. It's all, it's up to you. It's how you like to apply your products. But I do like to have those baby wipes on hand to wipe it back. Because this is too much, but I definitely need to keep fading it. So I just kind of like to rub it and get it in the spots where it's gonna live. Isn't that pretty? That's a pretty way. It's a pretty way to make your green pop. All right, let's see. You think the dirt has a softer appearance? I think the dirt is easier to fade out. You know, when you're doing this with your brush and you're able to, you know, kind of put that wax and blot it back, by blotting back, you're only really taking it off of the flat surfaces. So you're able to kind of get in there with your dirt and kind of brush it around. I don't know, I, I just, I happen to like my dirt. I've found the way that it works for me. And I really think the hot ticket for me and the dirt was getting this bell brush. I think the bell brush is what helps me control the amount of dirt that I'm putting in. It also helps with this really pretty fade. It really helps just kind of drag it out to where you want. But keep those baby wipes handy and, and move it around. You know, this is what it's all about, you guys, sitting on the floor and playing with your paint, playing with your products, deciding what you like and how you like it. I mean, they really look very similar. I just think that I kinda like the dirt that little bit, little bit better. And we'll see. How long does it take to dry and cure? Okay, so this was put on with spray wax, which is a wet spray bottle. Once it's dry, it will be dry. Okay, you're not gonna be able to wipe it off. It's gonna take, I like to say with all of my pieces, up to 30 days for everything to cure entirely. Your paint takes 30 days to, to really cure hard and make sure that it's ready to go. With your wax, your wax, if you touch it now, 
it, it's going to come off a little bit. You're going to have to wait at least 78 hours, 48 to 78 hours, 74 hours for it to just kind of cure up and get hard. Once it's hard, you're good. You, you're not worried about either sides of these coming off. You can cover over top if you want with a clear coat. You could go back over with, with your wax. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I like to, you know, wait for everything to be dry. I like to stick by the rule of, of 30 days for everything to be cured. And that goes for your chalk mineral paint as well as all of your items you're putting on it. But you could seal it in with a clear coat in a couple days if you wanted to and it's not going to come off at all. You just got to wait a little bit longer for the wax, I think. The wax is going to take a tiny bit longer. You can add it like you like. What do you think? Are we digging this little MCM piece with the black highlights? Do you love it? What do you like better? Wax or Dixie Dirt? Let me know. Drop it in the comments. Let me know what you like better on each side because we kind of have like side A and side B and they really look very very similar there's not a lot of difference I do like this wax too because it's nice and creamy and it's movable you know to be able to get it in here and just kind of like push it around I like this I like to play with the depth and see how it's gonna work on the piece I mean you could even use your bell brush to apply your wax if you like it's up to you Looking good, looking good. But I am digging this a little bit more. I'm not gonna lie. I just kinda like dragging this dirt around. I just think that a little bit of dark over top of such a vibrant green makes the piece look a little bit more high end. It just gives your eye that depth. Let's see, you're not great with the wax, try the dirt. You know, it It took me a while to try the dirt and figure out how I would use it. But this combination, I, I really think the bell brush for me was the ticket in getting it on the way that I like it. You know, that rounded edge, being able to kind of like rub it in small circles and get it spread out, almost like a, a really natural fade, you know? It's just, it's just good to try it out and see how it works for you. But I happen to love it. I love it. I love my Dixie Dirt. So that is Dixie Dirt in charcoal, charcoal, spit that one out, charcoal, versus black wax. So now you've gotten to be able to see a little bit about, you know, what we can do with some of these products and how you can use them to achieve a similar effect, but find the one that works for you. You know, finding the piece Finding that hot ticket item that works well for you. Some people, don't, they just don't like fighting with the wax and, and moving it around. Maybe you'll do better off with the dirt where you're able to use your, your bell brush and blend it in and getting it into all these little crevices because this is a super duper molded piece. Um, there's a lot of nooks and crannies that I'm gonna have to use this brush to get into. I gotta do that one, I can't remember. I can't forget to do it. Let's see. The bell brush might be out of stock. Due to COVID right now, there is a, a small, wait time on certain items since Dixie Bell's brushes are handmade um, they do have to obviously get them from a certain supplier that had a little bit of trouble with the COVID supply issue so hold tight hang tight they're replenishing stock pretty much daily check the website often see what they have in, in stock and if they have it grab it because it's one of my faves definitely one of my faves I just, I really like that rounded ability. This, this is giving me the ability to really, you know, move that dirt and get it faded in, get it fading in to where I like it. So, so there you go. I hope that helps. Good morning from Australia. Wow, that's far. That is far. So that is as far as I can take you right now because my little vanity or my little buffet here needs to, um, <laughs> I need to go back to the beginning, wait for that slick stick to dry, and paint the whole entire thing. But today I wanted to show you all of the options and all of the ways that you could use Dixie Bell paint products to paint a plastic buffet, right? It's a plastic buffet. How cool is that? It went from blah, this boring brown, brown plastic that I knew needed some love, First of all, I cleaned it with my white lightning. After I cleaned it with white lightning, I came in with my slick stick. 
Slick Stick is your primer that is going to help bond your paint to slippery or shiny surfaces. Um, knowing that this is a plastic veneer item, and I know there's a lot of furniture out there that's that plasticized wood, it's not real wood, you can still paint it. All of those IKEA specials that aren't real wood, you know, all these beautiful MCM pieces that are plastic because they're molded doors, you can paint them if you use Slick Stick. So Slick Stick is gonna be your primer for glossy and shiny surfaces that are not real wood. You're going to use it in the manner of one coat on. I like to use my chip brush so I don't ruin my nice fancy brushes. I'm gonna put one coat on, I'm gonna wait two to four hours. I'm then gonna apply my second coat of my Slick Stick where you are now going to wait 24 hours before you begin to paint. Your Slick Stick does need to be dry and cured for 24 hours before you're able to paint your projects. That is like the only thing that I really want you to remember. Take away from the entire tutorial today is that you know, Slick Stick needs to be dry. So know what's your prep the day before you paint, all right? Then I came in here with my Tree Frog Green and my flat medium brush, and I showed you that it's gonna take a couple coats of this gorgeous Tree Frog Green in order to cover this piece because Tree Frog Green just takes a couple more coats. It's the same as pinks, same as reds, it just takes that little bit more. But once you do get your coats on here and it's nice and even and gorgeous, you have a couple options for aging. You can use your Dixie Dirt, okay? And today we did Dixie Dirt in charcoal. We used our spray wax and our bell brush. These three things together gave you this side of the panel. It gave you this gorgeous faded out black, beautiful aged effect, okay? Then you also got to learn a little bit about Vestane Wax in black. That was used on the interior part of this panel so that you could compare the difference between Dixie Dirt or black wax. It's entirely up to you what you like to use for aging. Um, you can achieve a very similar effect, but by trying both of these products, you get to figure out which one works the best for you. All right, that was a lot of stuff today, huh? Crazy, crazy, but here I am on Wednesdays. I paint every Wednesday at three and I try and teach you as much as I can in the one hour that I have you. But as always, if you wanted to um, learn a little bit more about me and my crazy, bright, bold, colorful painting style, you can follow that little link above my head. I am Melissa. I am Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador, and I am the top drawer RVA on all social media. So come over and follow me. Um, and if you wanted to learn a little bit more about the difference between Boss and Slick Stick, Go check out my IGTV because I did a video yesterday showing you exactly the difference, exactly what you need to use for each project and how to do it. All right. Well, now I'm tired. <laughs> hey, Jay Poe, how are you? Um, that's it. That's it for me, y'all. Remember, don't forget to weigh in on these fancy pants legs. What should I do? Should I stain this wood and paint the tips gold? because this cutie little gold hardware is gonna go back up here? Should I not put legs on it and just let it be a really low MCM buffet? I don't know, I'm leaning towards maybe some beautiful espresso gel stain and some gorgeous gold on the tips. It's gonna be fabulous. It's gonna be fabulous. If I had my way, I would paint all of the things bright and bold and beautiful. I am not afraid of color. I think everybody should sit on the floor and play with your paint. So that's it for me, y'all. I hope everybody had a great day. Tune in next Wednesday. I'll be back 3 p.m. and we will have another project in the works. And if you want to see me finish this one, come over to my page and follow me at the Top Drawer RVA. All right? I'm over there every day doing something crazy. I hope everybody had a great day. Thank you. Bye.